Hello, I'm Greg. Welcome to Weenie Trades. Let's break down some stocks. Our first thing that I'll be breaking down today is not even a stock, it's an ETF. It's the SPY. And SPY, leaning into the morning, I was saying, hey, I'm looking, leaning just a little bit bearish on the overall SPY. Well, SPY just said, no, nah, we're just gonna bust through Friday's high and just kind of sell off near about Thursday's low. So SPY broke Friday's high just by a few cents, sold off. A lot of Weenie Trades uh, members caught the 440 short and nailed it and wrote it halfway down. Some wrote it all the way down on a smaller position. But nevertheless, SPY gave everybody a chance. A relentless push in the morning, a distribution, and then a sell later in the day. And we identified that uh, SPY is likely to go lower once we started to put in a bear flag. So what makes me think it's going to go lower rather than higher at that point in time is that if, if the bulls were strong, they would have gotten a nice good V bounce. But since the bulls only got a weak bounce and, and vibrated near the lows, that was a hint that we were going to most likely push lower. So moving forward on SPY, I do think that we are starting to near a little bit of short-term support. So the short-term support, you know, something about the 433.50 area. We'll see how it trades in the futures night. Uh, in the futures overnight session. Otherwise, 431.51 seems to be the lower dip buy if the futures are selling off just a little bit more. And again, now that SPY has done this, I would say it still puts the balls in the bear's court. So if SPY is bouncing or gapping up, you know, 437 seems to be an area of strong, strong resistance. Maybe even as high as 438 could be shorted on on the SPY. Otherwise, you could let it sell off and look for the dip buy or just no trade overall. GameStop had an awesome squeeze today. In the morning, it was just busting higher. And I actually had noted that there is an equilibrium. So what is an equilibrium? Well, look, we have a nice good range move first thing in the morning. So we make a high, a low. We put in a lower high. So bears that are selling right there are shorting. They're putting their stop loss above the highs. We put in a higher low. Bulls that bought that dip are putting their stop losses beneath the lows. Although those that are buying GameStop, are they using stop losses? Maybe, I don't know. Half of them maybe, half of them not. Anyways, it's important to think like a trader anyways. But buyers that are buying that higher low, placing their stop loss just beneath that low, boom, rip. That equilibrium broke bull and GameStop just went on a tear. And it really started to squeeze. And I said, oh, there's probably going to be some resistance at about like the 184.35. But then after we squeezed through there, it was about resistance for two minutes. We really we pumped all the way up to 189, 188.50. My number was 189.12. See, I have that alert set right there. But anyways, after I saw that rejection, I actually went short GameStop right there at the stop loss just above the high of the day. And unfortunately, I bought it when the implied volatility was very high. So be careful shorting meme stocks. Sometimes the put options just barely get going. I was short the 185 strike put or long the 185 strike put short GameStop and just covered at that low 183.50. And all the option contract did was move plus $6. So the sideways movement killed all the implied volatility. So that's important to note. The second time around was the better short trade shorting that lower high in front of the higher high. So that's just what happened today on GameStop. It was the fade after the initial morning move. Everybody gets a chance to make money. Bulls get a chance to make money. Bears get a chance to make money. What a cool day. Moving forward on GameStop, short term, we could get a little bit of a bounce maybe to like the 183 level. But longer term, I do think that GameStop is slowly gonna start fizzling on out and come down to a generous intrinsic value of something like $70 a share. So, but that's a generous one. Yeah, it's probably gonna zigzag and go sideways to slightly lower. Every single pump gets shorted into. So just be careful on GameStop. If you've been keeping up with recent game plans, I've been saying Tesla is my favorite stock to go long on when the market is strong. And as you can see, Tesla did pretty well today. Had a great opening range breakout over 790. Had another breakout over oh here, 790, another breakout from 788, another breakout from 795. So Tesla is just kind of all over the place. I went ahead and took the long trade on Tesla right over there. Took some good uh, half profits, but really wanted to hold the rest of my piece for the end of the day. But Tesla started to give it up towards the close along with the SPY. So if we look at like something like an hourly time frame, you know, Tesla doing well, pull back. Oh, 
the big end of the day dump and the spy is just going to be dragging down tesla but nevertheless uh it was more likely to stay as an inside day anyways what was the odds that tesla breaks 800 and rip state 20 versus just snap back in especially in this market environment but nevertheless on the daily chart still like tesla if it's ever gapping over 800 i'm going long and i'm going long for tesla something like 830 so that could be a call to potentially sell against on Tesla, you know, 815 is a shallow target, but something like 835, 834 is going to be a, a little bit more of a stretch target. I don't know if we see Tesla all time highs before the end of the year. It might take a little bit longer. Time will tell. And the reason for that is, is because we're expecting a potential monthly lower high. And that could come in this upper area and Tesla could snap back. Then we'd look for a monthly higher low and then an EQ to hopefully break bull in the longer run. So keep an eye out on Tesla. Still like it for relative strength, but will get dragged down with the SPY. SoFi also had a great day today. And if you watch the pre-market prep at Weenie Trades Live, I was saying SoFi on the, on the list for a potential long trade. And that's because they're getting upgraded and based off the daily chart, it was at a breakout level. Well, unfortunately I didn't really catch SoFi at the break, breakout level, but my number 1712, boom. Big breakout on SoFi and a continuation day all day today. So SoFi made a high of 7, 18.51. Uh, next area of resistance for SoFi, if you're still holding, watch out for this $20 a share. People are going to be probably selling at least a little bit initially at $20 a share. Nonetheless, though, the dip buy is the pullback into the former breakout area. 17.70, but I think a little bit lower, maybe down to like 17.40. So those are the potential dip buys for SoFi or SoFee. Lastly, I want to quick touch on how you really want to let your winners run even if they went a lot further than you thought they would. So for example, on Boeing today, I said, hey, I like this trend on Boeing today. We're relatively strong. We've got a dip. We've got a curl higher after a higher low. I like this buy right here on Boeing right about 228.15 with a stop loss just underneath 228. It was super cool about this trade was that I was risking $5 and I was planning on making like, oh yeah, about $10, a good two to one risk to reward, but Boeing just took off. And I was just like, oh, okay, you're just going to go? Why, why, why Boeing? Why this stock? Why all of a sudden? Right, Peter? Why Boeing? Why Boeing just start to go off? I don't know, but I'm going to take the money and run and off of a $5 risk was able to get... 10 to 1, almost 11 to 1 on my money, just trailing up my stop, trailing up my stop, and then just taking profits right in, in about the 231 area. So Boeing, pretty interesting move. And I just wanted to share that, that sometimes just randomly cool trades come out of nowhere and there's there's no grind, there's no chop. They just go and, and work. So got to find more trades like Boeing, certainly in this market. That was money. And um, yes, coupon code, use coupon code SPOOKY. Yes, I do use coupon codes because they're fun to do. And it's a good incentive to check out the courses. So use coupon code SPOOKY for 25% off. Content constantly being updated on a weekly and or monthly basis. Go check it out. Thanks for tuning in. See ya. And Peter says, check out the course. Bye-bye.